Hey guys, how are you? This is John from TopKey. Super excited to announce that we've just closed our $5.2 million seed round led by Felisa Spinchers with participation from Andreessen Horowitz and Y Combinator. At TopKey, we're building the ultimate expense management corporate card for vacation rental operators. So think of things like unlimited physical and virtual cards, automatic bill pay with AI built in, direct PMS and accounting integrations, and a whole suite of other financial products designed to really streamline property managers' workflows and improve the speed at which they can close their books each month. Super excited to talk to both of you guys, uh, or the whole team actually, on the Good Morning Hospitality podcast. Um, love the show and love what you guys are doing and just very excited to... Uh, to connect and sh share a little bit more about what we're doing with the funding and tell you a little bit more about what's in the roadmap for Top Key in the future. Thanks so much and excited to uh, connect soon. Welcome to Good Morning Hospitality, your one-stop shop for the latest news, noteworthy trends, and thought-provoking discussions across the industry. From hotels and short-term rentals to all things travel and hospitality, you'll find each episode equips you with the information that you need to start your week. Join us on Good Morning Hospitality every Monday, wherever you get your podcasts. How was your guys' weekend? Everyone doing good? Jamie's off into a new destination. And welcome back. I think this is twice in one month. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I'm in Maine right now, uh, visiting the family. So it's it's great up here. And Michael, I know you're you're still down in in the south, but it's... 65 degrees and, and cool and foggy this morning so it's it's amazing it was it 95 is like, and humid yesterday same so. same <laughs> it's literally it's you walk outside and it's like being in water already you're just like constantly damp it's i i miss the northeast in the summer <laughs> this week has been an interesting one lots of uh lots of big big company drama and we can't wait to get into it uh, Will, you want to lead us in? Oh, yes. I'm very excited about this one. Uh, as we were gearing up last week for this episode, um, some fun drama, as Michael said, Expedia publicly breaks up with Hopper. And for any of our listeners and live viewers, Hopper was getting a ton of attention throughout 2022 and especially going into Hopper Homes and all these other verticals and all this other stuff. And I don't know, I was a person that didn't really go for all the hype, but um, as you can tell now with Expedia publicly saying like, hey, we're breaking up with you, uh, you cause all of our users anxiety and we don't, and like travelers in general, not even just like Expedia clients uh, due to um, what do they call it? It was a specific term. Um, Michael, you might have a better recall of it, but anyways, I was pumped because Skift was pretty direct. Expedia was pretty direct. And it's finally, like big companies are not beating around the bush when it comes to some of this like PR and press about certain things. Like it wasn't like a fluff piece. It was pretty straightforward. And yeah, so I'm excited to dive into it with you guys. The only thing worse than a breakup is a public breakup. And then, yeah. it, and then, and then saying that you're fine on the backside when everyone knows you're not. Yeah. So Jamie, can you break down for us the, um, I guess the the likelihood that Hopper has zero effect on their business, or how, how likely is yeah. it that uh, that that statement is true or not? Yeah. So in 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 the press release, they said that they had multiple um, ways to get the uh, inventory that they sell through their app. Um, and broadly, I, I believe that. And for one, I have no inside knowledge of Hopper or, or anything. So um, this is me just, um, I'm guessing. Uh, but I suspect that there's lots of ways that they can um, get the inventory for hotels. And there's a lot of channel managers. There's a lot of OTAs out there that have access to that inventory. Uh, but for the uh, short-term rental inventory, there's really only a couple players out there, Airbnb, Verbo, maybe booking. Uh, there's a few of the bigger channel managers out there that maybe they could piece it together. Uh, but losing access to the Verbo inventory is a, is a big deal. They were able to launch with 2 million listings around the world. And they've said in press releases that they've got and just around a million active listings uh, for short-term rentals. And while they've got Evolve, they've got some of the big OTAs or some of the big PMs out there, 
And this is probably a big loss for their short-term rental inventory long-term. Just like commenting on your, like the, the puff piece, like there's also, you know, um, benefits to Expedia. Like there's a PR spin on their side as well. So um, I think it, it is like both, both sides. Um, but the, I'm, I'm very uh, skeptical about, about those comments. And I kind of agree that it's going to take a little while to kind of cobble it back together. Um, but I thought, you know, when Hopper Homes launched, Miami was like a big market, a big push. And so I thought I'd supply some real time data um, <laughs> on what we've seen. Um, and so this year, so this is year to date, like to yesterday evening, we've received only 22 bookings from Hopper. And so, I mean, just in the scope of thousands of reservations. So it's, um, you know, that's, that's not great, especially because this was supposed to be one of their like bigger pushes to, you know, bigger urban markets. So, um, you know, if they're trying to rely on their own direct inventory, I think that that's going to be um, quite a struggle. And Brandy, we did the math. You had approximately a uh, hundred thousand available nights, but at the beginning of this year, like from January mm -hmm. one to now, and so with twenty two bookings, yeah, that's a uh, that's not much, right? A lot of some niche sites might be driving more more bookings than that. Not yeah. not a five billion dollar company. So I certainly bought the Hopper hype two years ago, uh, but it does not seem to be living up to valuation or expectations. I bought the hype in the sense of when Capital One invested two rounds into the company, I thought that was, again, okay, that's a little validating. I'm a big Capital One fan. Obviously, I know there's other travel cards and reward programs um, out there, but for me being a personal user of the Capital One venture, X Venture card and stuff, uh, I was excited. I was like, okay, this is cool. It's, it gives me an easy opportunity uh, to to use points in an easy streamlined way that's not clunky with like no offense to chase but my business card is a little bit more harder to use with those reward points than it was for the x venture so you know that was awesome but then again it wasn't like i don't know how hopper can publicly say this isn't going to impact their business at all because expedia and verbo especially being such a big channel, there's just no way that that loss of inventory is not going to impact that. And if I'm a customer of the Capital One Venture Card or whatever they're they're using, Hopper's been powering that program for a long time, and to have less inventory is probably going to, you know, obviously decrease users or people that even want to go to that platform to well to, to use points. It it kind of seems like to me that Expedia was powering it, not Hopper. Speedo no, is powering Hopper and Hopper's at powering Capital One. So, yeah. you know, I don't know. I don't know how Indirectly. involved, um, how much inventory split was direct, directly signed with Hopper versus through Expedia, but Expedia is kind of powering that, it seems like. Well, from the user's perspective, you see Hopper is Hopper, sure. whatever is the one. So, yeah, maybe on the back end, there's obviously all sorts of stuff that we don't really know. But, you know, also the, the Skift article was going into how Hopper was doing direct deals with hotels outside of the Expedia right. partners. So, you know, there's a bunch of back end, you know, handshakes and agreements that were done that were all like, hey, but, you know, they were pretty public about that, which was pretty insane. Jamie, I would love to um, get your thoughts on this. Obviously, uh, you're, you're the data guy, the, the nerd with the, the power and numbers behind it. Uh, I would love to hear maybe some perspective there with you. Yeah, one is around the and business model that Hopper was taking around fintech, because uh, we know and they weren't making their money d based on just being an intermediary of selling Expedia's inventory, right? And it was the fintech, it was the uh, price lock, cancellation insurance, all those things that they could add on top of a a booking. Um, and Morning Consult has some great data in their latest state of the uh, um, lodging industry. And they point out that Gen Z adults, the sort of type of traveler that Hopper was really going after, was more likely and more willing to pay for um, additional cancellation insurance than any other um, sort of generation of traveler. Millennials, Gen X, boomers, 
So Gen Z, 29% were willing to pay $50 or more for free cancellation or to have that flexibility, where for boomers, it was only 9%. So it really aligned with Hopper's sort of strategy, going after the Gen Zs, offer those fintech products to them. And that's why, and broadly, I believe I believed in sort of Hopper's uh, trajectory of being able to offer these additional things that people were willing to pay for. Yeah, I think that really fits in also with kind of the generational personalities. You know, you've had this group of adults that's gone through a pandemic and had kind of this like uncertainty around, you know, am I actually going to be able to take that flight or go on that vacation? So I don't think that that's totally, uh, totally shocking that, you know, that was their ideal customer. Although it is the cancel for any reason insurance is something that, I mean, that's a great market, just being able to go, you know, have that security that no matter what happens that you can, you know, you can rely on that. I will say I use their price lock feature when I was using points to book our trip to scale in Barcelona and it sucked like a day later, they, they let, they released it. And I was like, you're, you're supposed to hold it for 72 hours. What the heck? So anyways, my prices got jacked. I was pretty upset. <laughs> I had a vending session with Michael on, on the back end. So. I, I'm curious, you know, if, if Hopper was driving a bunch of leads, like I guess there's two sides of the coin here, right? They certainly are a competitor of Expedia and booking. Mm -hmm. Now, if like Expedia's distribution model, it's they get about half of the commission they normally would. I think it's like 7% of the 15 or something like that. Um, I don't, don't quote me exactly on that. Uh, but if they're driving a ton of business, that's essentially free marketing for Expedia. It, it kind of seems silly for them to cut it off uh, at the knees without um, without their actually like their issue being a, a real and valid one. And you know, when you have free money coming in from a third party partnership, it's really tough to cut that off. So uh, there's, there's certainly more to the story from both sides here. And I think we'll find out more as time goes on, but you know, it, this isn't going to go without a, an impact if Hopper was driving significant amounts of bookings from Expedia inventory without Expedia taking or feeling some of the brunt as well. Yeah. So, so Brandy and you, you work with Hopper, you guys distribute your uh, inventory through them. How easy is it for you to sort of direct directly add your inventory to Hopper and, and other channels like that? Um, well, it's pretty through Rentals United. Um, that's, you know, that's the distribution channel that we're using. Um, and it's pretty seamless, honestly. I mean, as far as that goes, but you know, there's certainly other, you know, other ways of distributing you have, um, with TravelNet on track, you have their distribution hub. I think they have a easy way to connect to Hopper and a bunch of those other, you know, channels like Marriott and things like that. I found that with Hopper, we, I mean, we did it, all of our inventory is already there through the channel manager. So it was just kind of easy to connect and it didn't require, there's some others like Marriott, for example, where there's a lot of specifics in your listing that you have to do like specific to that channel. So Hopper was pretty easy with, you know, with that. We have had some issues with guests, not sure who they should be like contacting. I think, especially if they're booking through their Capital One you know, however they're booking, they're not sure, like, is Capital One responsible? Is Hopper? Are we, yeah. you know, so there's been a little bit of confusion around that. Uh, but as far as distribution, I mean, it's been a relatively easy, you know, easy partner. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, I'm uh, curious with all of our viewers, you know, what your thoughts are. One, the public, like, the openness, I guess, around this announcement with sharing, like, why they're kind of breaking up would love to know your thoughts there and then two for any of the other whether you're a hotelier or a vacation rental operator we'd love to know your thoughts if you've been on hopper homes or on the hopper platform in general um, is this going to impact i'm probably guessing that expedia wasn't seeing a lot of business from it anyway so yes michael could have been free marketing but 
you're not seeing anything from it, you know, might be an easy, easy cutoff. And uh, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on there. But uh, Jamie, I'm, I'm curious. We have a quick little segment I want to do with you uh, promoted and sponsored by Sojo. Are you, are you ready for this new segment? I'm ready. I'm <laughs> excited to see what, what it is. <laughs> okay. So I'm calling this segment who the heck. All right. So who the heck is a customer of an air or of air DNA that you would love to give 30 days of free wine to. Now this is a sneak peek for all of our other listeners and viewers that we haven't shared with, but you know, if you like wine, you might be uh, getting a little gift to deliver to your front door. So who the heck Jamie would you give 30 days of free wine to? All right. I, I'm going to go with uh, one of the recent guests that I just had on Air DNA's podcast, the STR Data Lab, and it's the CEO of Minty Living. So Benjamin awesome. Gross, uh, their company I'm, is amazing. Uh, they're a, a urban property manager. Uh, they were uh, nominated for shorties for best uh, best urban property manager this year and and one that I see doing very well. So I'll, I'll nominate awesome. them. Great. Congratulations, Minty Living. You just won thir- uh, free 30 days of wine. And what the <laughs> heck? Wait, 30 days of wine. That's how many, how yeah. many <laughs> bottles per day? <laughs> <laughs> well, free, free wine box, whatever that, that may be. But <laughs> not uh, at your Jamie. pace of drinking brandy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. Hey. Uh, I'm, I'm a little confused though for any of our live viewers, uh, Jamie, why is your boss in the green room right now? She's just chilling back there. Is she just checking up on you? Making sure you're not like, you know, talking mad crap about Hopper or something. Actually, I I think I forgot to ask for this week off. Uh, (laughs) maybe that's it. Uh, (laughs) I'm not actually well, sure. We've just outed you as being on vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, snap. Uh, not to make this a public, uh, you know, scowling, but I guess we should bring her on just to make sure that you're okay to be back in Maine for the rest of the week. Hi, Demi. Just picking <laughs> up on Jamie. He's supposed to be on vacation, and here he is talking on an industry <laughs> pod. Take Classic. time off, Jamie. Unplug. <laughs> Classic Jamie. It looks like we're having some Wi-Fi issues with this not is, only it's Brandy. It's not our day. <laughs> there we go. It's not our day for live streaming. There you go. Demi, are, I see you moving again. Are you back? Can you hear us? Uh, yes. I'm so okay. sorry. All good. All good. Yeah. Well, um, I think you guys have maybe a little special announcement to to make. I saw some cool stuff on LinkedIn. Oh, and also, by the way, Demi, pleasure to finally meet you. I know it's been probably a long time in the making, but we're glad to have you on. Thank you. Yeah, it's so nice to meet you guys. I feel like uh, I'm having a brush with fame. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> Let's go. Well, <laughs> share share with us some some news that we might have seen if you're on LinkedIn watching the live. You might have seen this press release and the announcement go out, but I would love to, to hear from you guys first. Yes. Uh, so our exciting news is that AirDNA has acquired Arrivalist, which is the leading location intelligence platform in the travel industry. Uh, so we're super, super excited to bring these two teams together. So give us a, maybe an inside scoop on what Arrivalist does as a general company and product. But then I would love to know personally just a strategy from you guys. You know, what are you guys go- planning on doing um, with this new data company, not specific to short-term rentals? Yes. Uh, so Arrivalist is the leader in location intelligence, which includes insights like traveler origin. So where are people coming from when they're visiting a particular destination? Um, points of interest. So when they actually get to a destination, what do they do while they're there? Uh, they also have a product that we actually have partnered with them on in the past, which is the Arrivalist lodging product for people to understand. Helps them understand uh total travel spend between hotels, uh, (laughs) short-term rentals, and then staying with friends and family. So you can get a complete picture of where travelers are are staying in your market and the different types of lodging there. So uh, looking holistically at a market, um, primarily right now, the client base is hotels and then destination marketing organizations, but we're looking to uh, spread it more broadly within to the travel space as well. So this gives you guys insights into not just 
the platform data, but all traveler data, where they're going. And then did I hear you right, Demi, at the top that it can trace to to locations like restaurants and events? Hmm. Okay. That's awesome. exactly right. So anything where there's a sufficient volume of people going to the event or to a district or area, uh, we can track that. Can you track the amount of Swifties that have been traveling the country to attend <laughs> the Taylor Swift tour? Uh, because Denver was crawling with them all weekend long. So figure <laughs> yeah. that out yeah, on the track. You can hear them coming. So that's the easiest way to track. Um, but yes, yeah. the data also <laughs> is helpful. The I love it. Swifties. Seriously. Seriously. Well, I'm curious. So should we see a lot more in depth? Like I love the monthly reviews from air DNA. Should we see a lot more in depth stuff when it comes to um, the arrivalist acquisition and the new data sets that you guys are going to be, be having access to. If I'm saying it even right, I don't even know if that's how it works, but I could be totally <laughs> wrong. Yes, it would be impossible to stop Jamie from having more data within his reach and not incorporating it. Um, so yes, we're excited to bring the arrivalist data set into a lot of the content that we're already creating. Uh, so things like the market reviews, and then also excited about what we can do. Jamie, what metric are you most <laughs> excited to report on with this data role? Yeah, I am Broadly, it's I'm getting a better view of traveler share uh, within a market so, and do, looking at it over time. So the competition heating up between hotels and short-term rentals, uh, being able to look at how that share is sort of evolving over time, but also specific points of interest. So I hear all the time that people want to invest in a unit that's going to be attractive, let's say, for people going to the Smoky Mountain National Park. But you could never really tell, and for everyone that's going to the national park, how far out are they actually willing to stay? And you may get it a bit more anecdotal or even within a city of you want to uh, attract travelers that are going to a concert at the, and is it still the FTX arena down there? Uh, so um, you can no, it's really... called the Kaseya now, I think. <laughs> oh, Something else. <laughs> yeah. Does it still have FTX on the top though? Uh, probably. Yes. I, I think that costs yeah. like $300,000 to remove. So I think it might be there for a minute. <laughs> All right. But understand how far people are willing to stay and are staying that are traveling and stay and, uh, to that arena as a point of interest. And then where else they're going once they hit that ar arena. Um, and then also for like hotels and vacation rental managers, like if they are doing direct marketing, uh, um, to a destination to, um, to attract visitors and then be able to understand, okay, do visitors, more visitors actually come and book uh, after doing that, that type of marketing. So um, really um, interesting use cases within the industry. So go ahead, Brandy. Yeah, I, I was, that's the point for me, like the, the marketing capabilities that I find to be most interesting. We're really trying to figure out how we can pinpoint um, you know, because obviously in our markets in South Florida and New Orleans, people are coming for a variety of things, especially in Florida. So it's being able to make sure that we're, our advertising dollars are going directly, actually are having the most impact. Um, so it'll be really exciting to see. Um, I'm very curious because um, Miami gets a whole, it's a broad spectrum of people that come down here. So I'm, I would love to see more like precise data on exactly who those people are. And we'll know... Right. Uh, if leisure is actually a thing we've it's certainly been a, mm -hmm. a hot topic uh of the past year or two but i'm a little bit skeptical on how how much leisure travel is actually happening but maybe that's me agreed just projecting too much on uh on my <laughs> the way i travel but look forward to seeing some of that data breaking down what uh what's next demi is uh are, are there more uh, investments or acquisitions on the horizon, or is it integrating this one in wholly first? Well, on announcement day, I think we can uh, we can focus on integration. Um, but yes, more exciting things hopefully in our future. Um, obviously, having the backing of Alpine uh, is phenomenal in terms of having the support, the resources, 
uh, and just the execution horsepower power to be able to go out there. And, and yeah, I love how Michael on a, on announcement day asks, what's next? Okay. So like you bought a, <laughs> you bought a company, like let's what, who, who's up next? Like you can't even let her enjoy the new, the new team on that's uh, a, we, we integrate today and then tomorrow <laughs> we uh, see what else is out there. <laughs> Yes, because merging, it only takes one 24-hour period and Easy, right? everything's fine. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Hey, uh, apparently to Jesse DePinto, it was pretty pretty smooth and, and easygoing. Yeah, so, that, yeah. uh, th- that hurt. That hurt me on like, a physical <laughs> level. <laughs> can, we, can we let Jamie take a couple days off first, Jimmy? I Remember am proof? upset to see him here. <laughs> he should be enjoying his cabin vacation. We should have had Demi on the whole time and just told Jamie to send Demi any data that he is, you know, scounged up uh, a little bit maybe before the show. But I'm sure Demi could have done that as well. So, you know, Jamie, you're, you're a workaholic, my friend. I've got <laughs> I've got a question that I always ask Jamie, but Demi, I'm going to ask you today, okay? Jamie, do you want to ask it for me? <laughs> I do not. I want to hear you uh, let it fire. All right. So if you are going to be investing in a four bedroom house today, what market would you pick? Ooh, I feel like I was set up for this one because we just put out our most recent ranked by air DNA report. And there was a market in upstate New York. Well, actually there were two, there was Buffalo, that was one of our recommendations. And there was another one in upstate New York that I now no longer remember. And those are the ones that I would pick because Jamie Lane was involved in the creation of the list. That's funny right. because that is where I'm from. Um, I'm from Rochester, so not not Buffalo, but um, I'm a, a native upstate New Yorker and we never get a lot of love. It's always a lot of <laughs> um, shaming and is that even really New York? Is that basically Canada? That kind of thing. So I'm happy to hear we're positively ranking on some lists. <laughs> yes, this one's for you. You're Thank time you. to shine, Brandy. <laughs> well, we'll make sure to... And- yeah, this report was actually called the Hidden Gems, uh, and and Niagara Falls was number one. Was the market? Mm. There we go. See, I was gonna plug it into the show notes and tell the listeners, you know, hey, if you don't know, go check it out. But we'll still do that for the other remaining. And now we'll have all the gems. data to track them to Niagara Falls, see who's doing the boat tours and who's who's going <laughs> actually over into Canada and back. So exactly, got to get those wine tours in. It's beautiful. <laughs> Agreed. Well, Demi, thank you so much for uh, taking the last, you know, 10 minutes of uh, the show basically to just uh, kind of announce. I know we had some glitches, but um, thank you for taking the time to join us and to share the Arrivalist acquisition. I know personally as a podcaster and interviewer myself, I would love to do a deeper dive with you when when we have some maybe better Wi-Fi and more time outside of a 30 minute morning show. So that would be amazing. And then for Jamie please take some time off for the rest of your vacation and uh, not get us in trouble with Demi while you're working on days off. So that'd be great. Sounds good. Yeah, thank and, you so and well, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out on in Denver next week. Perfect. Then beers on me. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Well, Michael Brandy, great to see you guys. Anything exciting this week? Any special announcements like uh, maybe an acquisition or anything like that? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not uh, quite to the acquisition level that AirDNA is. So maybe in a couple of years, but looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, all the listeners and live viewers, thank you so much for tuning in and being part of the struggle bus today. We promise next Monday it will be a lot better and we'll have way better Wi-Fi stability. And of course, like always, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you all again next week.